Hi and welcome back to a brand new video with Minus 243 and I tried to record this uh, intro once before I just and I was just about to start a dead ball when I realized my voice is not recording. Um now it is, but it's probably better for you to hear my voice than to be able to be You know? So <laughs> okay. Anyway, with that said, I don't really know any of these two characters. Oh, I hit my mic multiple times, I think. Anyway, I don't know any, uh, anything about these two characters. I, uh, as I tried to say when I was recording without my, any sound for my voice, is that uh, I think Reverse Flash is somehow familiar to Flash, and then Black Goku is somehow familiar to Goku. That's all I'm getting from that, or their names, I guess. But I don't really know these few characters. So now, for real, let's get over to the analysis and see who is going. Or let's check the analysis. Let's check the analysis. And play. You know, 2021 is Adam and Eve's 50th birthday. And to celebrate, they want to give you a gift. No, oh, ten gifts. Huh, usually it would be the other way around. If you use our code BATTLE at adamandeve.com, you'll get 50% off almost any one item. Then Adam and Eve loads on the free stuff. That's a gift for him, a gift for her, and something for the both of you. Plus six free movies and free shipping. Remember, that's offer code BATTLE, B-A-T-T-L-E, at adamandeve.com for 50% off almost any one item and ten free gifts. All right, then. Let's see what they're capable of. Goku Black, the body stealing arbiter of divine justice. And the reverse flash, DC psychopathic speedster fanboy. They say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. But I'd say the sincerest form of flattery is not trying to kill your superhero husband. He's whiz and I'm boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. Okay, a 2D battle. What consumes the thoughts of a god? What do immortals dream of with all the time in the world? In Zamasu's case, his one goal was divine justice. Yeah, this guy's got major Final Fantasy big bad energy all over him. As the assistant to Universe 10 Supreme Kai, Zamasu prized above all else cosmic order and natural beauty. Oh, that reminds me. Did you know I can burp and fart at the same time? Here, let me try. <gasps> Unsurprisingly, Zamasu despised the inherently chaotic nature of mortals, being seemingly unwilling to lift themselves out of their own cycle of violence and stupidity, like some people I know. Yeah, I know those people too. His heart was clouded. Until the day he met Son Goku. With God Key, Goku could match blows with the God of Destruction, Beerus. Their clash nearly destroyed the entirety of Universe 7, a cosmological structure at least nine times larger than our own universe. At most, it could even be as large as 13 times greater than ours. Well, as that is worth mentioning that when two gods of destruction big. fought, they were capable of casually destroying two of these universes. And since the shockwaves from their punches traveled across Universe 7 in seconds, they'd have to be hitting way faster than light. Goku was tapping into his Super Saiyan God form for this, though clearly not at its full strength. While the exact multiplier for Super Saiyan Blue is unknown, Toriyama himself has directly compared it to the original Super Saiyan form. And don't forget, Goku trained with Whis and fought in the tournament with Universe 6 before Zamasu caught up with him. So by that time, he was way stronger. Here was a mortal with the powers of gods beyond even Zamasu's abilities. Someone who could bring his dreams to fruition. So Zami did what anyone would do in that situation. Kill his master to become the Supreme Kai, wish on the Super Dragon Balls to switch bodies with Goku, and kill every single mortal in the universe. And thus the deity Zamasu became Goku Black. Please, Goku Black? You couldn't be more creative. No, you might be wondering, uh. why didn't he just wish all the mortals dead? But that wouldn't be as fun, would it? Black's got all of Goku's strength and powers, but wielded by a genocidal maniac instead of that lovable goober of a monkey man. And in keeping with Goku's Saiyan heritage and godly key, Black can easily achieve the form of Super Saiyan God Super Saiyan. But with a champagneful twist, Super Saiyan Rose. 
Rosé? Well, uh, what, what, what makes that different? Watch out before he unlocks Super Saiyan Live Laugh Love! He stole Goku's techniques too, like the instant transmission, where he focuses on a person's key signature to teleport to their location. He's even got the black Kamehameha, which is a Kamehameha, but pink. And with a Saiyan body, he gets stronger and stronger every time he almost dies. He just becomes harder and harder to kill. Which really sucks for the rest of the universe. Because Black is kind of like if Goku just snapped one day and used his powers to their full murderous potential. Like the God Split Cut. Where he so he's out for blood though, pretty much. Slice you to ribbons. He used this very technique to... Uh kill Goku's family. He can even extend this keyblade into a huge curved one called the Azure Dragon Sword, which along with his Kamehameha confirms my suspicions that Goku is colorblind. Actually, Black's Azure Dragon Sword is named after a legendary weapon wielded by one of Earth's greatest warriors, the desert bandit Yamcha. Wait, what? And he can make a scythe and slice open space time itself to create a bunch of shadow clones. Uh, Black, not Crater Boy over here. But his most dastardly weapon isn't a key technique at all. It's the time ring he got from his dead master. This ring allowed Black to travel through time. And even a oh, okay, so he can do time travel. That can happen there. Free reign Complete the Avengers. So then again, I assume. Reverse Flash probably can do the same, but. We'll see. Let me get to him. How are there two Gokus? There's only one Goku in the multiverse, right? But Goku met Black before he met Zamasu, which means Black existed before Zamasu came up with the idea. And then they killed Zamasu before he could do it anyway, but Goku Black was still around? What the hell is going on? Sure, it's a classic grandfather's paradox. The thing is, Black's time ring prevents him from being affected by alterations to his own personal timeline. So, killing him in the past doesn't change his future, and vice versa. He's almost impossible to kill because even if you do it at one point in time, he still exists at another point in time. And another. And another. And another. And another. Oh god, I hate time travel. Hmm. So he's like Kang the Conqueror, always around. No matter how many of him you kill, it's always gonna be a reversal from out there. One with everything. Like I said, Major Final Fantasy villain vibes here. It took Zeno, the Omni King, the most powerful being in all of creation, to step in and erase that entire timeline just to stop Black's rampage. How ironic. Zamasu's higher calling was the eradication of all mortal life in the universe, and he stole the strongest mortal's body to do it. But in the end, he was always doomed to fail. His quest for power meant nothing against a being that would always be stronger no matter what he did or who he was. And the universe ended up being destroyed anyway. It's like one big cosmic joke with no one left to laugh. You've been running around making messes All right, too then. long and now I'm going to choke the light from you. I can't wait to watch you die. Reverse Flash then. The Flash ah! is one of the greatest heroes in history, an inspiration to many across time and space. And there's no better example than his number one fan from the 25th century, Eobard Thawne. All right, Wiz, we've tackled a lot of stupid names for things in our years here at Death Battle, but I'm confident that Eobard is the dumbest first name I've ever heard in my life. Eobard was completely obsessed with the Flash and dedicated his whole life to studying the Speed Force like a total nerd. Good luck to him, because there's no way he's figuring that shit out. But Thawne's life irrevocably changed the day he discovered a time capsule from the 21st century. By some strange coincidence, it just so happened to contain Barry's costume. By experimenting on it, Thawne managed to replicate the Flash's powers turning himself into a mirror of his idol. And you can bet he totally crapped himself when Barry Senpai showed up in the future and took him under his wing. It was a dream come true. Until Barry realized that Thawne had fabricated crimes in order to show up and save the day. Disgraced, Thawne promised to better himself before traveling to the past to prove his worth to his hero, to prove that their bond was special. That's when Thawne found out that Barry already had a best friend and a family. And a life without him. He didn't matter. He wasn't special. He was just a nobody Barry tossed out in the trash and forgot about. Like my Tinder dates do to me. That's depressing. Only, when Thawne visited the Flash Museum in Barry's time, he discovered the secret identity to Flash's greatest enemy that in his future had been lost to time. 
the one Barry was fated to kill in battle, Eobard Thawne. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, ain't that a bitch? The shock drove Thawne mad. If he couldn't be Flash's best friend, he'd be his greatest enemy. And I guess also ensure his own future death. He would travel from the future to terrorize the Flash family in the past. Revenge in reverse. He'd become the Reverse Flash. Reverse Flash? We're really setting the world on fire with these names today, huh, Wiz? Yeah, for, I guess so. ...from the negative speed force, which he generates with every step he takes, just like Barry does with the regular speed force. The negative speed force gives Thawne access to many of the Flash's powers, including his mind-bending super speed, enough to travel all across time and space in days. He can keep up with and surpass other speedsters like Barry and Wally. Who once ran fast enough to cross the universe faster than two gods who could teleport. Wally even beat himself in a the race. two gods that can teleport. Was still faster than that. Wait just a second, he beat himself? That doesn't even make sense. But unlike Barry and Wally, Thawne applies his powers more catastrophically, using them to their full potential without any care for collateral. Take, for instance, his ability to vibrate himself through solid objects. Objects like, say, vital organs. And if he did, he'd scramble their molecules, causing instant death. Thawne did just that to Barry's wife, Iris. And Barry did not appreciate it. Thawne's vibrations are so powerful, he can even produce a counterforce that can reverse the destruction of the entire universe. Pretty crazy okay. Stuff, but even B-tier speedsters like Jenny Ock That's crazy. the same kind of thing. And when Barry and Wally raced each other, they were tearing up the entire multiverse. Thawne can create shockwaves with a snap, phase into your body, with a snap? And and even okay. High speeds that you'll so he's doing the tennis snap very much. Make shockwaves instead. Of stealing your speed like other flashes, he can steal your time. Yeah, Thon can yoink decades from your life and age you 80 years in just a few seconds. Kind of sounds like your sex life, oh, is. <laughs> but Thon's greatest ability is his unmatched skill at time travel, and he uses this expertise to be as petty and cruel as humanly possible. Thon wasn't a dummy. He knew that if he went back in time to kill Barry before he got his powers, he'd erase himself from the time stream too. So instead, he'd just make Barry's life suck as hard as he could, push him down some stairs, retcon his best friend from history, kill his mom. He even told Barry he'd go back in time and adopt him as his own son. Dude, what? That's another big difference between Thon and Barry. Whereas Barry only went back in time to save his mother's life, Thon often went back in time to try to fix his own mediocre life. He killed his more successful younger brother, his career rival at the Flash Museum, and every single boyfriend his crush had until there was no one left but him. And when she still rejected him, he went back in time again and made her an invalid for the rest of her life. Jesus Christ! This guy's a monster. Yeah, he's a little uh, extreme too. Or whatever. If he went back in time to kill someone, they'd be dead in the future, which means, which means, which means he'd never know them and want to go back in time in the first place, right? Wiz, maybe time is a construct with no legitimate unit of measurement other than the meager attempts man has made to understand the incomprehensible world around him. Uh, well, actually, Thawne was just inside the time stream when Barry initiated Flashpoint, which rewrote the universe while Thawne was technically disconnected from it. So, Thawne essentially broke. Literally, figuratively, mentally, physically, temporally. Or maybe he just hated Barry so much it defied the laws of time itself. Whoa. Mind blown. More specifically, he became a living paradox, a being without a past or future, literally without continuity. Not only did this mean he'd be unaffected by changes to his past, it made him effectively immortal. Stabbed in the chest by evil Batman, vaporized by Iris in some sweet, sweet payback, or getting Dr. Manhattan by the You're really hyping him up now. Thawne was always Real reborn, media is losing, but... Dead. But more than anything, it made him immune from consequences. Unlike Barry, whose changes to time could destroy all of reality, Thawne could do whatever he wanted. He was impossible to stop with no reason to hold back. He survived a hit from Barry while he had the entire speed force absorbed into him, and even Wally's infinite mass punch, which has the mass of a white dwarf star. A white dwarf is essentially the remains of a star's ultra-dense core, which has a mass of over two octaves Tillion tons. And he took one of those to the noggin and just took a nap. Man, he must really hate Barry if a son to the face can't take him down. But he doesn't hate Barry. 
all of his schemes, all of his machinations, all of his insane timeline shattering threats, all of it was because it was the only way he could think of to spend time with his hero. That's really sad. His yeah, it is. It all. He never intended it's to be sad and possibly a little dark. He to be the kid Flash. All Fawn ever really desired was to be by Barry's side. In the end, though, goody little two-shoes Barry forgave him and then vibrated away his living paradox powers, erasing him from existence. Though not entirely. Barry didn't kill Fawn. He reset his timeline. Removing the one thing driving his hatred, his relationship with Barry. Without that, Thon was a normal, happy Flash fan once again. It's comics, Wiz. He'll be back. And when he does, there'll be no running. He'll always be faster. He'll always catch you. And time is always on his side. Hmm. You still think you can take me? Even death can't catch me. Okay. That looked like it came from a game. Which game is that? Set. We've run the data through all possibilities. But first, let me tell you how to I gotta skip the ad, by the way. Alright, um... So, okay, after watching the analysis, I just gotta say that I really hopped up for a first flash there. For quite a while. Uh, quite a bit there, at the end there. Um, he even said he is immortal, but he has said someone is immortal before and then still killed him. So, you know, because immortality means you pretty much can't die, and uh, if you can't die, even if you are supposed to be immortal, you're not really immortal. Not completely, at least. Uh, anyway, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, best thing I think they said about these two characters. Uh, I feel like the black, uh, Goku Black is going to win this one, or, yeah. Excuse me. I feel like uh, Goku Black is going to be the one to win this one, just because he said that pretty much he, no matter how many times you try to, you know, he's always around there, he pretty much. He's like King the Conqueror in that sort of thing, he's always there. So, um, yeah, and uh, sure, you also said the fact the fly, the fly <laughs> verse was uh, immortal, and I almost feel like that's gonna go against him in some way for this foul. And then gonna say, you know, when one of the time when they say he is that, and then they still kill him. So, because that happened before. Anyway, um, and yeah, <laughs> sure, he can't. Oh, I'm not sure what to say about this. Um, I don't know what to say here. I, I think I'm just gonna cut this one short, actually. I just say that Black Oak is going to win, and if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, I guess. Uh, but the fact that you can erase uh, Reverse Flash's uh, history, and you can't do really do that uh, with Goku Black. So... Yeah, Goku Black is going to win, and we'll see if I'm right or not. So, let's get this over with, and play. But right now, it's time for a death battle! <laughs> it was me, Barry. I was the one who... Uh Is he having a cup of tea? Mortal sinners, prepare for divine justice. <laughs> well, it does give him a reason to fight, though. But why is he there in the first place? Just to cause destruction, I guess. All right, that was the last service that guy ever had to offer. Okay. 
Hmm. Because of Super Saiyan forms too, I think it's a lot more powerful to, you know, than the Rare Flash too. Just because I think I remember saying something about that, about Goku, that, you know, they are pretty powerful forms, so. Time travel. Why you dead? Hmm. Yeah, the shadow clones. Or black clothes in this case, maybe. Okay. Okay, that was a. Alright, that explains why that one was there and. Quicksilver died, but. Wait, could you destroy that? Did it say that? Did it say anything about you destroying that ring? Because I don't think this said anything about that screen ring being possible to be, dis be destroyed. Unless I missed it, which means I'm wrong. A fairly tricky matchup to figure out, least of all for their incredible levels of power. Black could destroy a universe like ours at least 660 times over. I mean, a punch at least as big as a star is really badass, but that's in another league. However, there was a lot more to cover than just how many stars or universes they could blow up. At their peak, both Goku Black and Reverse Flash were so impressive they were removed from time itself becoming living paradoxes, making any attempt to kill either of them meaningless. Stupid time travel. It's difficult to determine who would figure out a counter to this temporal invincibility first, but it would most likely rely on a combination of speed and smarts. As far as speed goes, uh. no surprise, Thon definitely had Okay, I thought I was going to sneeze, but I can't do it. Times faster than light, <clears throat> but Thon is a flash. Even early in his career as a member of the Flash family, Wally West could reach speeds that were impossible to comprehend and calculate. There are numerous examples of this for multiple iterations of the Flash, many of whom Thawne was clearly equal to. Plus, he's kind of an expert when it comes to timey-wimey bullshit. And he could likely overpower Black and destroy said time ring too. After all, Thawne once generated enough energy to counter the destruction of the entire DC Universe, which is stated in comics to be at least 100 trillion light years in diameter. That's over 1 billion times larger than our own universe, and over 70 million times larger than Dragon Ball's Universe 7. It's sort of impossible to lock down the exact limits of Goku Black's upper strength without getting into lots of assumptions and guesswork. He's obviously stronger than Goku was when he clashed with Beerus, but even being super generous with training and power boosts and multipliers, the gap here is way too wide to be able to just assume Goku Black could match this level of power. The DC Universe is just too big! And remember, Barry and Wally's race almost ripped apart the entire DC multiverse! It's also important to stress that Goku Black is not Goku. Goku's drive and willpower can push through even the most absurd limits to potentially match higher levels of power. Zamasu took Goku's body because he's more than willing to take shortcuts. It's an entirely different mindset. Yeah, and once he took care of that time ring, Reverse Flash had a lot more options than just overpowering Black. With that super speed, he could pretty easily scramble Black's insides or age him to death with a touch. Zamasu may have been a deity even without the time ring, but Goku's body is mortal with a limited range of age. 
might have really screwed yourself with that one, huh, Zam Zam? Goku Black was a nightmarish foe, but Thawne's experience with time travel, ridiculous levels of hacks, and frankly impossible speed gave him the means to take the win. This fight was definitely not underwhelming. The winner is the reverse All right. Flash. Congratulations, it, uh, Reverse Flash. Something else to watch? Season two of Last Laugh is available right now on Rooster Teeth. It's a show all about contestants trying to make each other laugh, but everyone trying their hardest not to. If you laugh, you're out. I know which was next, so but let's right see it now, anyway. Click in the video on the side. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! yeah. Oh no! Oh yeah! Okay, let's start with this stuff all. I enjoyed the analysis. It was uh, fun and interesting to listen to what they had to say. Uh, I feel like it was a bit... In Unless I missed it, I feel like they should have mentioned... Uh, you know, unless they... Mi okay, let's try that again. Uh, I don't know if they mentioned it, unless I missed it. But uh, they should have said something about that ring being capable of being destroyed, I think. I think that should have been said in the analysis. I don't think that will have changed my uh, prediction or guessing or whatever, but you know, it's just a nice little detail to know, but but either way, uh, okay, reverse slash one, uh, the animation was fine, I enjoyed the voice acting too, so that's fine, uh, but that's pretty much what happens, this is pretty much what can happen, you know, when you put two characters, that can be everywhere at all times, pretty much, no matter what. Meaning that even if uh, one of them was chased with Kane the Conqueror, I don't think it will be that much different, considering he is also all over the timelines. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It can be interesting to see him someday, though, but I don't know who he would be suitable to go up against. Uh, I Anyway. So, yeah, I did enjoy this episode, so good job on that. Uh, on the next one, we have Macho Man. I don't know Macho Man, but I know the Macho Man song. I'm not going to sing it in case copyright or something, but... But, um... Oh, we also Kool-Aid, though. Which I do know. I do know Kool-Aid. Uh... Mostly because of the new videos or something, where we being referred to as the Kool Aid Killer, you know. If you remember, I don't know if you've seen that video. I don't know if it's still out there on YouTube, but I remember seeing a video about the Kool Aid Killer, and he was killing people who wasn't drinking Kool Aid. <laughs> That's pretty much where I know him from the most. So, but I don't know why he. Anything else about this guy? I think because I don't know if he's a mascot for. He's probably a mascot for the cool head. It makes sense, but I don't know what makes him uh, powerful. When it comes to Macho Man, I mean he is Macho Man, so I assume he is strong. But uh, I don't know. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, reaction video, and be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and all that good stuff. Uh, so it really helps out the channel growing and all stuff, and let's uh, try to reach 1000 subscribers before the end of the year. I've been stuck on 800 or whatever I, whatever I am at this point. L below 900 to say that, but I've been stuck on that one for a way too long now, and it's just not <laughs> going over on 900. So, if you will uh, hit that subscribe button, that would really mean a lot to me, personally. And, um, I'm sorry about the delay for this uh, react video, twice. Uh, if you're curious, uh, last uh, weekend, the one that just passed by, for me, I'm recording this on a Tuesday, by the way. On a Tuesday, on the same week, this one is going out, in case you... Well, right before Halloween, too. Anyway. I wasn't able to uh, publish it that Saturday, previous Saturday, because, uh, well, I didn't have the opportunity to do videos at all that weekend, and, uh, yeah, 
And uh, then the last weekend before that, I didn't have the motivation to make any reaction videos. Uh, so I barely had the motivation to make videos for my region channels at this point. So you know, but I'm gonna try to make videos there too. But time will come, I guess. Either way, so now you pretty much know why I'm uh, not. Why this video didn't come out during one of those two weekends? Because I know which one is uh, after the one that came in this one, and uh, I think that might be more of a Halloween team episode. But it won't be for me. It will be two weeks afterwards. So next week, next Saturday. Is the Kool Aid episode, and then we get over to the news episode that all. That premiered yesterday as I'm recording this, as far as I saw. So, uh, yeah, that could be interesting. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this reaction video and uh, episode. And feel free to let me know what you thought about that, up, uh, about this episode down in the comments below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Me and the Tree signing out.